Hello, and welcome to There's No Crying in Crochet with Debbie from Madam Stitch and Biz, that's me, from Busy Crochet. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Uh, let's go ahead and just get our business out of the way. Um, if you are watching on YouTube or you're watching on a, um, a replay, make sure that you click on like and subscribe so that you can get the notifications. Make sure that you go to both Debbie and my accounts so that you can follow both of us. Because not only do we do this every Friday at 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern, but we also each provide tutorials and things of that nature to help those that follow us. So can't wait to meet you and get to know you. Alrighty, and give stream, if you are on Facebook right now, give StreamYard permission to see your name so that we can see your name in the chat. Because if you chat on Facebook and we don't, you don't give them permission, then it just says Facebook user. And is we would just like to know who you are because we like you. Um, Alrighty. And what's up this week, Debbie? Oh my goodness. Just lots of crochet business stuff. There's not much going on here at the house. We're just kind of doing chores and trying to keep ahead of the dust and the dirt. But other than that, just a lot of crocheting and a lot of writing. That's about it. Mm -hmm. Very dull week. Busy. Yeah. What about you? Um, it's just been super hot, too hot to go outside and do anything. I've been doing lots of crocheting myself. I've been, I've had the chance to really plow through on a shawl that I've been working on. And because my, for a while there, my left arm was giving me fits. So I wasn't able to do any work at all for like three days last week. And I didn't know what I was going to do with myself. Um, but this week I've been able to kind of catch up with all of that. So that's been really good. Um, other than that, it is just, um, you know, you and I were talking about the weather cause that seems to be the predominant theme throughout mm -hmm. the United States, it's just hot, hot, hot everywhere you go. Yeah. I was, I was, um, apologizing for the fact that where I live, I actually have the windows open and have all week because we're, we're in, I think the one little shred of the country that doesn't have a heat alert <laughs> at all. So we've mm -hmm. had, we've blissfully, I've, I've just, I hear the dollar signs going back into my bank account because it's not <laughs> going to air condition my house. Now that's oh. going to change because it's getting more humid and you know, who wants to live in the muggies, but, but it's been really, I'm sorry, really nice here. It's okay. I mean, I forgive you. You can't help <laughs> that you have great weather. <laughs> you know, I can't help that I live in, I, I, this is such a foul well, state. The butt crack is where I live because <laughs> it is hot. It is humid. It smells funky and you can't go out in it. I mean, you know what I mean? So it's just, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm All sorry. Right. So what are we going to talk about today? Oh my gosh. This is the, this is my heart other than my husband and my kids and all of those, you know, human beings. This is my <laughs> crochet heart. And thankfully biz has, is, right there with me, but granny squares are my jam. And this month, August, it's not officially granny square month. It's officially granny square month in Madam Stitch world, but um, granny square day is August 15th. And I have a special story to share with you at some point during the broadcast, because it just makes this entire month worth it. But I celebrate all month. What about you, Biz? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to be honest. The granny square does not hold the same place in my life that it holds in yours, but I have a deep appreciation for it because it is one of those very simple um, designs that it, because I'm a, I'm a stash buster. I like mm -hmm. stash buster projects and the granny square is an amazing stash busting project. And yep, it is coming back into style again. And it, it has mm -hmm. been for a few years now, but like it's, it's a timeless design. It is a timeless, timeless design. And I think part of its glamour right now is that we as crochet designers are finding new and innovative ways to use the granny square mm -hmm. um, and incorporating it into a more modern um, style. Mm -hmm. um, I've been alive for a gajillion years. So I remember when we had um, granny square shorts on men and full <laughs> out. I mean, it was just really, so it was long. like, 
seeing men in speedos on the streets, please just don't do that. It's That's not hilarious. nice, but, um, but it's just such a timeless, um, but I also think we're kind of in a place right now where people are feeling very, they need to feel nostalgic yeah. a little bit. And yeah. so that vintage feel of the granny square really speaks to everybody because you can create some wonderful vintage heirloom pieces yeah. with granny squares sure. um, as well as making them modern. Jake well, says, this is great. Grandma. Everybody has a oh. grandma that, that, had at least one granny square Afghan in their house on the back of the oh, yeah. board. Well, of course, my origin story is that my grandmother mm -hmm. taught me to crochet and she started me off with granny squares. Now, mm -hmm. I honestly don't remember sitting with my grandma and crocheting, but the impact that it had on my life is, mm -hmm. is priceless. So I'm going to pull out, I show and tells later, but I'm going to pull this out now. Acrylic yarns in the, I'm going to date myself, in the early 70s when I made this scarf was just hideous. It was hideous. <laughs> Scratchy, so coarse, the the colors bled. It was just horrible. It but felt this, like the plastic it was made out of. Well, it still smells like it after all these years, but this is the very first scarf that I ever made. I mean, it's because so pretty. Because my grandma... And it even has fringe. Oh, wow. But I'm going to make an admission here that this has never been washed. Mm. The white is no longer white, my friends, because mm. I'm sure that if I wash this, even if I um, did it gently, uh -huh. all these colors would bleed and my, <laughs> my perfect granny squares would be for naught. But yeah, that was the first granny square scarf I ever made. And you, have, awesome. you have a story too. <clears throat> I do. I apologize for my coughing. Um, I do have a story about the granny square. I don't remember learning it with my grandma that taught me how to um, crochet originally. However, when I was getting back into crochet, um, my husband's grandma, who um, was my uh, father-in-law's mom, so maternal grandma or paternal grandma. Anyway, um, she, we were sitting on the porch and, and I said, oh man, I cannot remember how to do a granny square. Do you know how to do a granny square? And she's like, oh yeah. So, and this is a woman who she's very, very talented and, but she did mostly cro counted cross stitch and stuff. So the fact that she knew how to crochet kind of threw me off a little bit. And she taught me how to make the granny square. In the next year, she was diagnosed with lung cancer. And she was diagnosed and she passed away. Like, boom, it was, she found out and she, and she passed away. And, um, so when we went to her funeral, I had made, um, three small granny squares for the three youngest kids. And so that would have been the, the youngest at the time she was 18 months. So, um, it was like three down to 18 months. And, um, they put those granny squares into the casket with her. So, and I hadn't even thought about it in the longest time. And then all of a sudden I remembered, oh my gosh, she's really a big part of me getting back into crocheting because had I been stuck on the granny square forever, I don't know that I would have been as passionate about crochet as I am. Yeah. I don't know what it is about the granny square, but it clicked with me immediately mm -hmm. and I haven't stopped loving it since my grandma taught me how to do it. Um, mm -hmm. I love Jake's comment. He says, I love it's granny Yoki. squares and there are so many, I'm sorry, Yoki. Oh, Yoki. I'm sorry. Yoki. I love granny squares and there are so many possibilities with granny squares. They also come in so many different styles. Yoki, mm -hmm. I apologize. My reading glasses don't do so well. So it looked like Jake. Yoki. But yes, I agree. She's in Belgium. And I remembered. This oh my time. gosh, that's awesome! That's really yeah. Cool. Um, and Connie's really excited about Granny Squares as well. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put her yes, <laughs> yay for Granny Squares up there. And then because I am in control of the comments, and I completely forgot to click the comment, this is what she was referring to. As far as I love Granny Squares, um, and you're right, there are so many possibilities and things that you can do, and you can start with a Granny Square and switch it to something else, mix and match your your um. Uh, 
stitches together just to create a whole new look. I mean, I've got a couple of, I know that's not a, tr a traditional granny square behind me, but um, uh, Yoka. Okay. Thank you. I, <laughs> I was quite certain I probably got it wrong as well. Um, but they're kind of all over my house. One of, mm -hmm. one of the, um, I made a, oh gosh, let's see, 2020 it was actually when we were going into the, um, shutdown and I was like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? And I wanted to try and engage with people on, on Facebook and stuff like that. So I had a kind of a make along where I was creating this granny square, um, poncho and each, each time that we had a live, I would be a little bit further and we'd talk about how to, you know, size it and stuff like that. So that was a really fun project. And it's just crazy how it's just, you, you could just use it on anything. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we should probably get into why we're here because yes, we um, promised that we have talked about the history of crochet, but all right. uh, the, uh, not crochet, of granny squares because crochet is a totally different topic. Um I did a little bit of thinking about what what really is a granny square. Um, and I, I'm going to speak to this first because I'm a purist. Mm -hmm. I believe that this is a granny square and variations of it would include the groups of, I call them granny stitch now. So I'm trying to start a movement that the three double crochet that make up where the spaces are, mm -hmm. are called granny stitches because now I'm trying to take that granny stitch out of the granny square and use it in other designs. But uh, I'm, I'm a yeah. purist. So I believe that if it's a granny square, it has to have at least something of the look of a granny square, the original traditional granny square. Um, I've seen over the years as motifs have become more popular with all of the textured stitches and the different techniques that anything that's square is becoming call is now being called a granny square. Mm -hmm. That's in, in my mind, that's not the intent of what, if we want to honor that original granny square, mm -hmm. we're talking about the one that has the three double, double crochet cluster somewhere in it, even if mm -hmm. it's just a round or, um, you know, that's the basis for your square. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I mean, like, I don't have anything to add or take away from that. So <laughs> <laughs> what was, I was doing my research. Um, one of the bloggers that I read commented about how granny squares can come in all shapes. Well, you can use the granny stitch to make different shapes like circles. Mm -hmm. And I actually have a granny stitch hexagon cowl that I have in my design library and all mm -hmm. different shapes. You can make a Christmas tree skirt. You can do all kinds of things yeah. with it, but yeah. it, a granny square is a square. So sorry. You're, no, but you're right. Because it, it, but it's a square. A square is a square. And yeah. so, yeah, you can do a hexagon, but it is a granny inspired hexagon. I at like that. Point. that. It's I not, like a, you know, it's not a granny square. So yeah, right. I like the fact that you're kind of trying to take that language and changing it, you know, where we're uh, addressing the stitch as the granny stitch so that, like you said, to keep the square a square. <laughs> Connie I'm says, don't mess with the original design. Design, Just saying. I like that. <laughs> you're my she's people. She's a girl who knows what she thinks. <laughs> you're my people. Um, so that that's basically what a granny square is. So... Yeah. Um, I did a little bit of research and it's not, it's not easy to find the background of the granny square because when it started, nobody was really documenting it. Cause I don't think it, they knew that this was going to be a thing for decades. Um, so Biz, if you wanted to share um, when the, was this granny square invented? Yes. I, I'm, I'm, I apologize for my delay, but there was a, a funky um, thing happening with your, your vocals. So if you could repeat oh. what you just said. Oh, um, like there was this weird pausing. I know I, our internets are going crazy today. Um, 
the honor. What I was saying was that when the Granny Square, Granny Square first appeared, it wasn't well documented. And I don't, mm -hmm. I honestly don't think that those who worked with the Granny Square originally un mm -hmm. understood that it would become a timeless part of the crochet vocabulary. So I, there's, I there's not a lot to show us when it was invented. Well, and if you think about it, so more, so much now, um, everybody is geared towards, oh, I've got to write this down, you know, like we've mm -hmm. got it because there's been no recording of, of history of when this stuff happened, so much of it. Um, but, and everything is so documented now that it makes sense, you know, that like, why would they have thought anything? We're, they're just like, oh, I'm just using this stitch. I'm just making this thing. Well, if you think about how crafts in general were passed down, it really wasn't mm. written down at all. I'm yeah. like, cruel embroidery, cross stitch, that sort of thing was all passed down by your mother or your grandmother teaching you how to do it. It was a skill yeah. that was expected that, you know, and I think crochet sort of along with knitting worked its way into that, um, into that process so that, and I think that's why my grandmother taught me to crochet. Yeah. My mother wasn't interested in it. <clears throat> and for some reason she saw that I had an interest in it, but it was passed down by word of mouth. Right. Um, I did find documentation that in 1885 in a publication called the Prairie Farmer, oh, you're really? going to love this, Mrs. Phelps <laughs> created a technique um, a, a look, a crochet look mm -hmm. that mimicked a technique called crazy quilting. Now, I, don't ask me what crazy quilting is, but she took that crazy quilting technique and she translated it into crochet. Um, I don't have a picture of it because it's it's only online. But um, if you look at it, it look it's in the shape of a square and it kind of has that cluster okay. look about it. I'm gonna um, look up but crazy. in 1897, I actually have these in PDF form, the Weldon's Practical Needlework magazine would be published um, periodically and they would have crochet in it. And that's the first time documented time, a pattern for a granny square type of object was published. So 1890s at the end of the 19th century is kind of when um, it started to appear in publications. Okay. But probably happened before that. Sure. Um, I don't know if you've heard this. There's a, it's an old wives tale, I suspect, that it's called grannies because grandmothers made it. And I mean, <laughs> if you think about it, back, back in the 19th century, yeah, it's probably grandmothers who were sitting around making it, so they called yeah. it the Granny Square. Oh, that that's could hilarious! Be. That could be. <laughs> and they didn't have a lot of money, and they may oh, not yeah. have had access to yarn. Like, oh my gosh, think about the access we have to yarn now. Oh, I mean, we're crazy. on our computer; it's mailed to us in well, right? One right. would think a few days, but it takes longer than that. Um, but anyway, we're completely dedicated to them. But they would use up scraps. You mentioned that it's a great scrap busting it project. It is. Multi so and, awesome. and I remember reading some mm. things online about how um, they would talk about it needed to be colorful. So they would have to incorporate. That was the mm. directive given if you were making a, a granny square. Make it colorful. So yeah. you know, use up all that colorful yarn in your stash. And that makes so much sense because if you <laughs> if you really think back, there are some, I think there's beauty in all of it because I, I love color. So I don't ever look at stuff like that and go, oh my God, is that ugly? But there are people who go, that is just hideous, you know, because yeah. there's just so much going on. And yeah. like, it's literally just, I look at it kind of like those scrap quilts that they make where 
it's you remember all of the different outfits and the different things that you made along the way as you're making this. Oh my That's gosh. I yeah. do when I'm making those squares as well. I'm yeah. like, Oh my gosh, this was this project. And Oh my gosh, this was this project. You know, well, you've, you've just given me an idea for a new scrap can. Yeah, <laughs> I need to go absolutely. through my, my stash and pick up all the things and document um, the scraps that, and what I made them. Oh, and you can call awesome. it the memories Afghan. Ah, you're killing me. That is an awesome idea. There we go. Well, I, th that's, I think that's we have crochet along. We will have a crochet along Ooh. and that's what it will be. Okay. You and I are going to put that together. Heck to the Keep yes. us accountable. All you listeners out there. Yes. Um, Ooh, Connie says scrap gans are a blast. Well, we have our, our, our marching orders now, right? Cool beans. All right. I've got it. All right. Down. We're going to do that. Well, I put the heading in our outline for today about what's so great about a granny square. Now we've been <laughs> lauding its praises this entire podcast. I mean, there isn't much in life except looking at my cute dog that makes me light up like a Christmas tree any day of the year. <laughs> but granny squares, do, I mean, I, Okay, so what's so great about a granny square? Let me share. For me, it is my mindful crochet. It is mm. most assuredly my mindful crochet. I have made so many granny squares in my life that I can sit and I can just feel the tension mm. release from my body when I pick up that yarn and hook and just start making a granny square. You know, we won't talk about sewing them together. Yes, it's stressful, but <laughs> you know what? But no, you, I find enjoyment even in that. Yeah, if you join it, if you join as you go. Uh -huh. the, okay, caveat: I don't necessarily enjoy join as you go because that means you have your little granny square mindful project becomes a little less mindful. You have to right. think about what you're doing, and that sucks. Right, exactly. Um, but anyway. Um, do you have any ideas about why a granny square is so great, Biz? Oh, a granny square is being so great. Um, I, I feel like I'm just repeating what we've already said, but it is one of those. It's just the versatility, the color, the, um, usability of it so that you can stick it in almost any project. And I'll tell you what, any more now that I'm seeing, it almost elevates the project. Because mm -hmm. you see all of these, um, like everybody's got cardigans that has granny squares in them now, or they've got bags mm -hmm. that have granny squares in them now. And everybody's like, ooh, you know, like it's so, I don't know what it is about the retro vibe. I don't know what you it know, is. You know, I that. saw a, a cardigan, a cropped cardigan on a model who was, mm -hmm. it, they were selling jeans and she was wearing this. They're not my colors, but I adore looking at them. You know, the pinks and the reds and the yes. the oranges and the yellows and all yes. of those those colors in springy, really bright, vibrant colors. Mm -hmm. And it you go, I want to buy those jeans. Uh, mm -hmm. Does that cardigan come with it? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What well, I you love. Just, you no, just mentioned ahead. something like it gives me a feeling of comfiness, you know? Yeah. There's a yeah. comfort that comes from a granny square. Yeah. And I think a lot of that has to do with there's so much memory and nostalgia mm -hmm. um, attached to a granny square, especially mm -hmm. for the two of us who yeah. there's more meaning to a granny square than just this is something if you crochet, you should learn <laughs> to do. Yeah. Right. Cause it's, it's a crochet uh, staple. It's a crochet thing. You should learn how to do this. Um, for me, and not only is it mindful crochet, I take my crochet with me everywhere. And mm -hmm. <laughs> I've tried taking full size blankets with me. Um, but you know, that so if hard. you're sitting in bleachers watching a swim meet, there is no place for that bag, honey, let me tell you. Um, so I take little project bags mm -hmm. um, and I'm gonna uh, throw out that word portability. You can take, gra yes. grab a skein of yarn, have uh -huh. your hook. You might uh -huh. want some scissors too, because 
Mm -hmm. chewing the yarn off at the end is usually not a good thing. And it dulls deep. your fingernail clippers. I, that, and it yeah. dulls your fingernail. Yeah. So make sure you've got your little scissors. I've got mine that I carry with me here. Mm -hmm. I um, have a pair of coating in this room somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. Um, <laughs> but I love the portability um, and the simple repetitive nature. That That's really yeah. what turns me on about granny squares. <laughs> It's almost like that mindlessness that, you know, like you had said, you know, you can kind of get lost in the project and you don't have to think about it. So, you know, when we were talking about attaching or, or, um, or putting the squares together, I, I know a lot of people hate doing that, but for whatever reason, and I, I, I cannot do the join as you go as what you would consider a join as you go, where you've got to do the color. And I'll, I don't like the way it looks. I'm just going to be honest. It, it, bothers me the little the little hitches in the it just <laughs> I have a thing I like really super clean straight lines when when I'm my blanket is done all my lines are really super clean and and, and straight yeah yeah it's yeah. just a thing but it's for <laughs> you know everybody has their quirks and hookup hey and it's a right? legitimate thing biz so um I but I love I love being able to kind of mix and match and have fun with where I'm putting things together. And a lot of times I will just make a, a square and I'll stick it on the last one. And, and then I get a strip mm -hmm. and then I sew the strip together. Yep. And then by the time that I'm done making squares, I'm done making a blanket. All I got to do is throw a border on it. I don't do that. <laughs> and sometimes I wish I did. <laughs> There's always that controversy of, do you weave in the ends as you go or yes, do. do you not? Okay. So I do a, weird thing. And I'm not really sure why, excuse me, there's a hair in my mouth. Um, yummy. I do weave them in as I go, but mm -hmm. I don't cut the ends off. Oh, smart. So you, I don't cut the ends off because for two reasons, I want to make sure that I securely, uh, fasten them off mm -hmm. after I've joined everything together. I want to make sure they're fastened off securely. Mm -hmm. And if I have to block those granny squares, I could pull them and I don't pull the ends out. The ends yes. stretch as I go. So then I, I clip them off when I'm done. Then I've got a wonderful pile of, of ends if I've made a blanket. It's wonderful. We've got some product um, suggestions Ooh. here. Oh, now, you know, that the difficulty that, the trouble with doing that is Biz and I are, you can, can you see the wheels spinning and the smoke <laughs> coming out of our ears right now? Because we're going, Oh yes, this is a good thing. <laughs> when can we start? Oh, let's yeah. the, uh, sorry. The broadcast is over. We're done. We'll, see no. we'll, just, we'll just put it at the end of the 8 million other things that we've got to do right now. You know what? If it involves a granny square, though, I will gladly put it at the top of my to-do list. Yeah. I mean, yeah. come on. Fun, fun, fun. That would be fun. Um, we should probably, before we just get, you know, make this an Completely hour and a half off episode. Base. Uh, oh, no, no, no. We're not off base. Definitely not. Um, I decided that we're going to talk about this more in an upcoming episode because uh -huh. we're going to spend the month kind of giving our tribute to the granny square, but I thought yeah. it might be kind of fun to talk about the cultural significance of the granny square. And the, this, it's not just the granny square. This kind of applies to the larger crochet yeah. um, community. But I think we've touched on some of these things. For instance, we talk about the nostalgia, the heritage mm -hmm. and the tradition. I mean, this, this is the, one of the only techniques, I'm going to put myself out there and say this, one of the only crochet techniques that has stood the test of time. It wanes and then it comes back. And But fashion, the fashion industry is the same way. Mm -hmm. It keeps coming back. You still see it in the original form. It's just, mm -hmm. it, it's, it creates heirloom vintage pieces. Can I, can I be so bold as to say also that it is one of the only crochet techniques that is only crochet. You can't, can you Ooh, knit? Yes. Can you knit a granny square? You, mm, no, you can't. You can't you get a granny square and you know, instantly that is crochet because you can't, 
you can't replicate it. I mean, I'm sure that there's some way to replicate it in knitting, but it's not going to look like that. So no, then everything I mean, you, else that you make in crochet can be done in knit as well. Yeah. Square. I completely forgot about that. I'm writing that down. <laughs> I completely forgot it's for about your that. your granny square book you're going to write. It's the only <laughs> crochet technique. Oh, that can't be knit. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Um, this is true, again, of crochet and knitting and any fiber art, I think. Mm -hmm. It creates a community and it creates a social yeah. bond, yes. right? So we have our Facebook yeah. groups. Um, for a long time, we had meetup groups that mm -hmm. would get together once a week and bring crochet and just mm -hmm. talk. Yeah. Um, it's a great way to make friends. Mm -hmm. When I take it out with me, people will ask me what I'm making. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm sorry. I have to just be, ugh, please don't call it knitting. What are you knitting? No. Oh, no, your craft, please. When you ask, when you <laughs> Although, ask me, it is not I'm knitting. Thinking, because <laughs> they say knitting, you're, it's obvious they don't know what the crafts are. Right. Hook is, is crochet. <laughs> Needles are knitting. Crochet and that's okay. Hook. That's our chance to educate. Yeah. Gently. Yeah. Gently well, educate. Gently. With love. Yeah. Okay. I take your point. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the other significance is utilization of right resources in times of scarcity. Yeah. And it also minimizes waste. So if you yes. do that scrap gan, yes. um, you are minimizing waste. Love it. Um, and the last one is educational value. We talked about mm -hmm. this um, being a good first project mm -hmm. for learning to crochet. Yes. I'm on the fence about that because I think you have to have some, your hands have to be used to crocheting before you launch into a granny square. So my, my grandma must have taught me something else before the granny square because I can't even imagine starting with that. But... Um, but it is considered one of the basic crochet techniques that you should learn. Mm -hmm. I think that it's one of those stepping stone patterns because mm -hmm. you are a learner, you are right at the beginning and you may have just learned the double crochet, but this is a good uh, chance for you to utilize and use the double crochet and actually make something. And that's mm -hmm. not just, you know, back and forth and back and forth and back. <laughs> that gets boring. I hate it. And so I don't know. I that's good that's mindful really crochet, crochet though, Biz. <laughs> yeah. <it's okay. laughs> that's okay. great mindful crochet. Let's single crochet a Some blanket. Some people it's mindful. Some uh, people it's boring. Kill me now. <laughs> oh, God bless America. No, thank you. <laughs> no. I, that's just a no. No. I actually did that once and yeah. No. Um, but yeah. All right. It's you know what so I absolutely time. love is every every teenager that I've taught how. Oh, I'm sorry. Was there a lag? I'm no, sorry. you tell. Oh, tell every teenager first. that I've taught how to crochet. They get to the, they always learn this little tiny little thing. They're like, oh, I'm going to make an afghan. Like, oh, OK. <laughs> you only know how to do a single crochet. No. They're like, oh, I'm going to make an afghan. How much do I need? And I'm like, oh, sweetheart, let's just start here. <laughs> Tens case. much, much smaller. You know, being from a music background, it's like you've learned Twinkle Twinkle Little Star on the piano. Now you want to play yes. a Chopin etude. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we're not joking. <laughs> Point taken. No. All right. Show and tell time. I have Dang. stuff. Oh my gosh. Yay, show me stuff. This. All right. Back in back in the 70s when crochet was um were, when granny squares were enjoying a heyday um uh, mm -hmm. magazines um would come out with patterns all the, that was basically the only way that you could get your patterns mm -hmm. but it wasn't mm -hmm. what you think of today with crochet world and um inside crochet and all of those magazines it was woman's day and okay. good housekeeping oh, they would come yeah. out with a crafts issue and i would they would put them at the the cash wrap and they, yes. you would be checking out and I would check it every time I went past to see if the next issue had come out. Now, this That's isn't okay. a magazine, 
but from the 70s, Woman's Day put out a book of granny squares and other carry along crochet, That's 1975, awesome. right here. That's a whole book. A whole book. And it's, af it's black and white. People still, they were so into black and white. And there's your granny square, right? Oh okay, God. so there's the first one. This is great. Um, magazines. So these were the magazines I was talking about. Woman's Day <clears throat> came out with these. Granny square. Now, what card. they have on the t on the front is not a granny square. Shame on them. Same here. Not granny square. I don't know what that's about. But <laughs> here, <laughs> here is a faux granny square. Oh, there's oh. a granny, a solid granny square on the back. That's oh, good for them. Yeah. Oh, but here you go. A there bear poncho. Perfect. Yep. That looks super 80s. Is that the 80s? Uh, no, this is. Not, oh, you're right. 1984. That. Oh, do tell. I'm sorry, but okay. the 80s had a particular look to them. They, they did have did. a look. And teddy bears apparently were the thing. Yes. Um, this now Vogue Knitting decided it needed to get in on the fashion oh. train. And this is from 1994. They put a Vogue knitting crochet. Uh -huh. and look at this sweater. Oh my that gosh. So it's made pretty. in sport mm -hmm. weight Merino mm -hmm. and it is absolutely gorgeous. And there are just some amazing crochet items in here, but that was the cover of that. And the last thing is um, Debbie Stoller. Is that her name? Yes, yes, Debbie is. Stoller. I have that book. The Happy Hooker. Yay. And I have to read what she said when We're she introduced the happy Granny Square. We're all happy. You got to watch out with that moniker online because <laughs> you get some. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'll let that pass. Um, <laughs> she says, if you grew up in the 70s as I did, you might fear the Granny Square if only because for a while clothing was made of nothing else. It's true. Granny square vest, granny square shorts, granny square hats. Heck, I bet there was some kid out there who was forced to go to school wearing granny square underwear. Oh, man. <laughs> but it's time to give the old granny another chance. Not only can these squares be quite beautiful to look at when they aren't being made in a black, turquoise, red, yellow, green, orange colorway, as was the norm when I was a kid, but they can be loads of fun to make. I love yeah. that comment. I remember that. I swear. I uh, no, I did not. Well, my kids weren't born until the eighties, so I didn't send my kids to school in granny square underwear. I wouldn't even ugh, know where to start, but that's my show and tell. Well, the first magazine that you had, no, he yeah, has that one as well. No, you do not. This one. Oh my gosh. That is awesome. Oh, yeah, I, I looked through this. There aren't a whole lot of granny squares in here, which is odd. Here's a cute one. This mm. one. That's kind of cute. Oh, wow. That but, is actually cute. Yeah. Um, where they've done two colors and done some interesting things with that granny square. But yeah, the hairstyles and stuff. I should maybe dress up in one of these hair. You remember when you took this this side and you pinned it back and you made it all oh, curly. and with the comb? Yeah. Yeah, well, the comb never just, stayed the, the in my little, hair. The little brown <laughs> comb, they wouldn't stay? No. You know, my no. hair was so thick when I was young. I remember my mom, because when I was when I was little, I wasn't allowed to have my hair cut. And so it was down to my waist until I was mm. like 12. And my mom would take the, the combs and right here and just pull that back. You know how you have the long, super straight hair with just the combs right here? <laughs> Yes. I remember that hairstyle. I remember that. I remember all the stuff. Yeah. Well, <laughs> gosh, you have to show Debbie's comment because it's great. Made me a red, white, and blue granny square vest. I loved it. I just loved it. Wore it with white button down shirt. Yes. White jeans. Oh, yes. Yes. That was awesome. I Tyler love it. Oh, boot. my gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that's amazing. That's, <laughs> I think we should bring back that style. Maybe not the go-go boots, yes. but. <laughs> yes, but I mean, oh gosh, I I still have pictures of my parents when 
Um, I was born 71. So the pictures that they have are of the early 70s and they were over in Japan. So it was a military base and um, just the hippies. Oh my gosh. They were all just a bunch of dope smoking hippies. And the clothes were so bad, but like they even did the the, the halter tops that are coming back into style now. Oh my and a gosh. lot of them incorporate that granny square and stuff. So yep. much of that. Yeah, I, I really think styles are mm. cyclical. Oh, but are you serious right now, Connie? Again, we have, the- that's what she's saying. She wants to do as our next crochet along is that vest. Well, now we have two crochet alongs. We have a scrap gown, a memory be- Afghan and the vest. I've already got, okay, so shameless plug. Um, and do business it, part it. of this, yes, in uh-huh. October. Oh my gosh, you guys have to be a part of this. Um, I am running a crochet along with collaborating with 11 other designers who are awesome. Biz is one who are designing 12 inch squares that have some element of a granny in them. Mm-hmm. And we're going to release it like a real granny, a, a real crochet along yeah. free. Um, for the duration of October, I'm going to come up with two or three ways to sew them all together, um, and two or three borders. So when you're finished with it, there's this, it just, it's going to be a gorgeous, like I did a crochet along with a stitch sampler blanket just myself in October last year. And the blanket, I just won't even put it away. It's so gorgeous. And I cannot wait for this one. I still have to pick the colorway, but I'm leaning toward um, a muted pumpkin, a cream, yes. and some accent color to go with that. Oh, you're speaking my color language. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh. Yeah. But pump, not pumpkin, but a, you know, it's in that color family, but yep. it's more muted because I'm kind of a mm-hmm. muted person, but I cannot wait. It's going to be so much fun. But mm-hmm. now, Biz, you and I are under obligation. I think this is our contract. The comments have made it our contract. That we, <laughs> now we have it's written to do, down and we say I'm yes, we're obligated. Totally, totally <laughs> serious. Yes. Well, oh my I mean, gosh. It can only be fun, right? Right. Oh, I'm. this makes me so happy. I'm actually writing it down. Granny best. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> Connie said she'll be doing 50 shades of purple. 50 shades of purple. That sounds like a book. Should make, you know, it's kind of like the title of our podcast. We could do, but I don't know if I want to, but good for you. I love purple. It's just such a great color. It's pretty. I just, I like other colors better. (laughs) (laughs) Connie's one of my good friends. So I'm giving her good. (laughs) I'm good. I'm really glad to hear that. All right. I know I'm not hosting this podcast this week, oh, but, funny. but we oh, should funny. probably get to what we watched. We didn't even talk about this. Oh yeah. We didn't even it's discuss been... what we were going to be. No, um, I think about. we're kind of at the point where it's just, Hey biz, what'd you watch this week? Hey Deb, what'd you watch this week? Cause much, yeah. our schedules are so different. I think. Well, and oh my gosh, you've been evening. so busy this last week. Well, there's just not a lot on TV and the, uh, the British shows that, that I really want to start watching. Holy cow. They're long. They, are. they don't believe in the, the 30 to 40 minute episodes like no. America does and stuff no. them with commercials. They do 60 to 90 minutes. So they're like movies. Okay. So I will say there is one and I, I watched a couple episodes of it last night because it is one of the shorter ones. Go to Death in Paradise because we okay. remember we were right. Um, you did the other one, right? Yeah, I finished that one. Beyond okay, Paradise. Okay, so go to the yeah, go to the actual Death in Paradise, and start at the beginning. It's a great show. It'll keep you entertained, and you can do you know quick little quick little ones. Joe Pickett is a really good one. I love that one yeah, too. I just can't subscribe to one more streaming service. I need to stick with my. 15 Paramount is one of our kidding. main ones. So I probably should do that one because CBS is the the network channel that we watch the most, but um we we do um 
peacock instead. Yeah. But anyway, mm -hmm. I finished Beyond Paradise. They've yeah. got to come back for a season two. I think they need to, too. Uh huh. It's such a good show. Even my husband likes it. Yeah. But I've been um, watching Truth Be Told on Apple TV with um, Octavia Spencer. Oh, my yeah. goodness. She is. Uh, I'm now on season two. And it's just such a well-written show. And the characters good. are stunning. Stunning. Good. That's good. I've been stuck on Miss Marple. Um, That's not a bad thing to be stuck on. It's not. But I'm going to tell you. I, I remember Rochelle when she was watching that last time with us and she was discussing it with us and she had said that Julia, I know I, I can't remember what her last name is and it starts with an M, but um, that she was a good replacement. I'm having a hard time falling in love with her. Like I did with the original Miss Marple and it's just a difference of delivery she, mm -hmm. where she had said she's a little bit more sympathetic and stuff like that. And she is, she's a little too sympathetic for me. The other one was just a bit sassier and brassier. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I loved her. Yeah. So I'm working my way through it, but it's not. Well, give it some time. Yeah. And yeah. And I, I, I don't know how much time I'm going to have to watch TV this next week because I've, my anniversary is coming up and yeah. on Monday and we're going to a baseball game and Yay. yeah, just all kinds of fun stuff. Grandkids. So fun things. there might not be That's a lot awesome. of TV in my upcoming future. Well, this week we are doing our first. Um, okay. So my kids moved out. They live in an apartment together. It was one of those uh, God deal apartments. They couldn't pass up. Gave my daughter the opportunity to get out of my parents' house, gave my son the opportunity to get out of our house and they're living on their own. So that happened this last weekend and it's been, you know, building up towards this weekend where we're finishing up the rest of it with them. But what we decided because, you know, everybody lives their own life. And so that we would still stay connected is that we're going to do Sunday suppers. I don't yes. know if you've ever watched Blue Bloods. Yes. With Tom Selleck. Bit. But they okay, always so have that family meal. Sunday. Yeah, every single Sunday they have the family meal, the Sunday supper. So we thought, oh, that would be kind of a neat idea to try. So this Sunday is our, well, actually, it might be our second Sunday supper. And they get, the, I let the kids choose what they want to eat and like, um, you know, making dessert and all the whole nine yards. So this week we're having beef stew on Sunday with Ooh. fresh bread and oatmeal bars. Oh, I'll be right I can't over. Wait for Sunday. <laughs> be right over i'll be <laughs> eating ballpark food um, oh. on on purpose on purpose but yeah yeah oh i love tom too i am a big tom fan have you ever seen the jesse waters just is it waters oh my god am i am i saying it right no jesse stone jesse stone uh movies there's a whole series of movies mm -hmm. that tom Selleck mm -hmm. has done and they're all like kind of murder mystery ish Ooh. And it's, they're so good. They're so, so I might good. Have to check that out. Oh my gosh. Yes. Do it. Love them. They're like some of my favorite. I watch them over and over and over and over. Kind of like Pride and Prejudice. I haven't seen that one either. Oh well, gosh, girl. Uh, we have to catch a, you up. I know. Well, there's a and lot of baseball on right one, now. Though. Yeah, we'll do it. I'll find <laughs> time. I promise. She's like, you watch too much TV. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't have anything on during the day because I can't, I, I, that I have to pay attention to. So I do game shows and reruns of things I've, I've seen mm -hmm. just to keep me company. It's yeah. in the evening and it has to be copacetic with the hubs. Yes. If it's not, I, wa I don't know. Yeah. It's just, it has to happen some other time. Yeah. So, yeah, what we'll do here's, here's, here's another down the road idea. We'll have okay. a little yarn retreat <sighs> and we'll have murder mystery show night or something like that. Ooh, like It'll be that. a murder mystery yarn retreat. Okay. Now that's three things we got to plan. Mm -hmm. That's a down um, the not road. That I'm, that, yeah. That not that not, I'm complaining. Yeah. That one's not next week. None of this is next week. <laughs> No, no. My calendar says no. <laughs> my 
mine too. <laughs> Good. <clears throat> My psyche says this is not happening next week. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah. All right. Oh my gosh. I think it's, I think I need to go grab a granny square and just, you know, make it's time one for right that. now yes. because, yep. But this has been right. so much fun, Biz. It's it so is. much fun. And, and thanks for everybody who joined us today. Oh my yes. goodness. So much you more fun were, when there's more people. Oh, it's so much more fun interacting with y'all because mm -hmm. we know each other. We love each other, but we love to love up on you too. So absolutely. Oh, join well, us. Debbie had all seven of her grands here last week. That's a lot of people. Oh gosh. That is a lot of people. It is a lot of, a people. Lot of, little a lot people. of little people. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh I God. think we probably ought to stop on that note. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and she said, and their parents. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So you had a house full. Oh, thanks, Connie. We had a lot of fun with you guys too. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for being a part of our day. And we, now that we have um, begun the celebration of the Granny Square month, uh, next week, we are going to have a slightly going to still pertain to a Granny Square, but we are going to start implementing the second Friday of every month, we're going to start doing some uh, like teaching, I guess, maybe. How, to, how to read thing? patterns is our Education. first theory. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to be breaking down parts of the pattern every week and uh, teaching you guys what that means for anybody who doesn't know how to read a pattern. Uh, we are definitely all about equipping you with what you need so that you can be the best at what you're doing. So but there's no like crying and crochet. Absolutely. We are here to yeah, remove the frustrations. <laughs> but the Biz, we will be back in two weeks to talk about yes. um, Granny Squares, the the last cycle of popularity mm -hmm. in the 60s yeah. to the 80s. We're going to talk about that. So yes, we're talking about the eras of, mm -hmm. of Granny Squares at that point. Uh, but yeah, so like even next week, though, it's still going to partially involve a Granny Square. We're, we're just going to be talking about the pattern part. Perfect. Alrighty. Okay. So uh, make sure that like we, we said before, if you've made it this far and you've hung out with us this long, thank you. Thank you for hanging around. We like being with you. Um, and so make sure that you also click the like and share and subscribe so that we can hang out with you next time too. do we all do the every, things. Yes. We do this every Friday at 1 PM central, 2 PM Eastern. And uh, we hope that you enjoyed your day with us. We will see you next time. Thanks, everybody.